Hey everyone, it's John Tai here again from Hatch Duo. Today I'm here to talk to you guys about principles of aesthetics for industrial design. So a couple days ago, I posted on LinkedIn two dozen principles for aesthetics for elegant industrial design. And the post went viral, uh, surprisingly. I didn't expect that at all. I was putting some stuff from my head of principles that I've always kind of inherently used in design and put them onto a poster and I guess like everyone really took to it. So yeah, it went viral. We started selling posters as well. So if you, you guys are interested in that, we'll have some links below. But yeah, today I'm really here to kind of dig deeper into those concepts. And I'm gonna start with the first dozen. So there's 24 principles altogether, just, you know, at a high level for how to make products actually look good. So sure, form follows function, industrial design, you know, encompasses everything from ergonomics to usability to, you know, functionality, but how do you actually make something aesthetically beautiful? And that's what we're going to get into today. This is the first principle, capture a distinct silhouette. A product silhouette, if you look at it from far away or kind of squint your eyes, it's very distinct and recognizable. Whether you look at, let's say a profile of a Lamborghini or Ferrari car from the side profile view, you'll instinctually know what it is. If you look at, let's just say an Air Jordan 1, right? It has a very distinct profile of like what that is. You can tell what it is without even seeing the brand name. Like a teapot, for instance, right? Just when you see a silhouette of a teapot, semantically from a symbolic you know recognition of an icon you understand inherently that hey that's that's a teapot and strong silhouettes really give our brain a sense of comfort and a sense of hey this is this is something recognizable this is something beautiful this is the second principle design with proportion and balance so this is super important right when you're designing shapes and lines understanding if something is thin or thick and how that relationship conveys a certain emotion, whether that's conveying something sturdy or conveying something elegant, all of that proportional relationship of how shapes and contours fit together is super important on a product. Just how things feel balanced or imbalanced based on the weight visually of how you're proportioning things on the the design you know harmonious designs appear balanced and naturally appeal to human perception this is the third principle craft a cohesive form language this is very important especially to convey brand quality so having consistent lines consistent edges edge treatments consistent color material and finish all of that helps to convey a unified perceived quality of brand and a product the fourth principle is choose materials that complement the form Selecting materials carefully ensure that they align with your product's aesthetics, purpose, and brand identity. So this helps with perception, usability, and desirability from a design standpoint. Materials strongly influence how users perceive quality, durability, and brand positioning. Is it premium? Is it friendly? Is it a medical device? So the right materials reinforce the intended emotional connection. This is the fifth principle. Use color intentionally. Color isn't merely decorative, it impacts user perception. And so how you apply color, whether it's soft gradients to convey something friendly and gentle, or bold colors to convey performance, that all helps to communicate to the user how this, this product should be not only used, but perceived in terms of an aesthetic standpoint. And color can also be used to highlight touch points in a product as well. And how we balance that color in a product helps to convey that product quality, as well as the perception of the aesthetic uh, beauty of the product as well. This is the sixth principle, pay attention to surface finishes. So when you really look and touch a product and look at it under light, whether it's matte or gloss or textured can really change the perception of a product. So matte may help it feel a little bit more sophisticated or understated. Glossy may highlight luxury or boldness. And, you know, in terms of texture, that could help delineate a certain type of quality as well. So keep in mind texture when it comes to the aesthetics of a product. The seventh principle is create a visual hierarchy. So you definitely want to avoid cognitive overload when someone's viewing your product. And you want to really like gradate the priority in which someone views your product. Is it 
the buttons being the primary focus? If so, make those larger. Some of the other details that are maybe like fasteners and or parting lines, make those kind of hide away, right? You want to make sure that the product has a first, second, and third read. When you establish a visual hierarchy, making certain elements of the design primary and others secondary or tertiary, you help balance the design as well. And so the aesthetics not only make it feel more elegant, but the in terms of the user focus for actual user experience is also optimized. The eighth principle is emphasize or conceal seams and fasteners. So whether you want to be on one side of the aesthetic where you want something to feel more rugged, you may want to expose and emphasize fasteners and seams to help it feel more industrial. Whereas on the opposite end, if you want something to feel very elegant and premium, you maybe want to hide all of that and, and make sure that all of that is hidden away and as minimal as possible. The ninth principle is incorporate a distinct brand element in your designs. So an example would be BMW's Kid Double Kidney Grill or Dyson's Universal Ball for their vacuum or Coca-Cola's use of red, right? All of those are signature brand elements that repeat over and over to create consistent brand recall. So a brand signature element matters because it evokes a sense of trust when someone sees it. It creates product consistency, and it also makes products very easily identifiable without having to read a logo. So you know instantly it's BMW, for instance. The 10th principle, consider the three-dimensional user perspective. Consider all different angles of the design. Don't just draw it from the side view. Car guys, I'm talking to you. But really consider, you know, when you're designing a product, the entire three-dimensional view from all sides, the top, the bottom, three-quarter views from different angles. Understand how it looks from different angles and design in that way and understand if it, the design is balanced or not. Thoughtful three-dimensional product development ensures proper user perception of the product because the person is also evaluating the product from all three dimensions as well. The 11th principle is striking a balance between simplicity and character. This is one like I personally love because it's a constant dilemma when you're dealing with the design. Make it too simple and it becomes sterile and boring. Make it too flashy and it becomes too polarizing. So striking a balance between simplicity and minimalism and having a little something that, you know, looks like a, has a little flair to it, whether that's like a color accent or a little shape detail, whatnot, having a little bit of that to balance a very clean design, I think is a balance that you want to achieve when trying to achieve elegant aesthetics in design. This is the 12th principle, play with light and shadow. Unlike 2D graphic design, with industrial design, we're dealing with three-dimensional objects. So in a sense, we have to consider how light and shadow affect the three-dimensional object. And so when you are designing an object, consider painting with light, shadow, and reflection. How you foresee that is going to be key in making sure the aesthetics of the design look very clean and elegant as well when they're photographed. And so those are key things to think about as well. So I hope you enjoyed it. This was part one of the first dozen principles of aesthetics for elegant industrial design. If you're interested in our poster, you can buy it in our Shopify link down below. Uh, feel free to visit our store. Otherwise, until next time, let's hatch awesome. Yeah.